and then the blood is just thrown away. And here we've made it into uh, perhaps the most valuable resource on earth. So hello, I'm back. Blood, sweat and tears have been shed these past months of absence. But enough sweating was done during the summer. Tears have already been shed. So that just leaves me with blood. And whether taking a part of blood and injecting it into old animals is enough for rejuvenation. That's right, many of you may remember earlier this year, I made a video on the oldest living rat. And now we have some updates, in particular, what actually were these rats given and what changes were seen, showing both some DNA methylation results and some glycan age data. Sound interesting? Great, let's go. So firstly, we should probably recap on what I mentioned last time. The story begins with Dr. Harold Katcher, who on coming across some early work on heterochronic parabiosis, began his own search for a human rejuvenation therapy. Heterochronic parabiosis involves surgically joining two animals together such that they share a circulatory system. Previous data has shown that when you do heterochronic parabiosis between old and young animals, the old animals seem to benefit. In particular, there's this landmark paper in 2005 by the Convoy Lab that showed that it ameliorated ageing phenotypes. So Ketchup sought out to further test this theory, and he was a supporter of the presence of there being potentially rejuvenating factors in young blood. So long story short, he set up a study to inject old rats with concentrated blood plasma. This concentrated blood plasma was called E5. Rats beginning at two years old were then injected four times with this E5 over eight days, and then received the second dose later on at day 95. Following these injections, many measurements were made, many of which are described in Catcher's book, The Illusion of Knowledge. And in my previous video, I tried to unallude these claims, and we saw some videos showing that these treated old rats seemed to have better grip strength and some other preliminary data suggesting that this E5 injection was reducing the DNA methylation age, a proxy that's used for biological age, with one of the female rats, Seema, at the time of me making that previous video, being the longest lived Sprog Dawley rat. Now there's a new preprint with some updates to the study. So firstly, we'll take a look at some of these updates in terms of measurements, and then we'll discuss the interesting question which I left untouched last time, which is, what is E5? So I don't think this data changed, but I'm gonna show it again anyway, and that is this DNA methylation data. Or essentially they're looking at the epigenetic marks in different tissues of these rats and whether or not the old treated rats had a similar pattern to older rats or to younger rats. And although this graph is labelled very badly in my opinion, because I'm assuming the blue bar here is representing the young rats, the red bar being the old rats and the orange bar being the old rats that were given E5, you can see that there's closer match between the blue and the orange bars, suggesting that the epigenetic age, this DNA methylation test, is more similar between the older treated rats and the younger rats, suggesting, as they claim in this paper, that E5 was having a rejuvenation effect on the different tissues tested, here the liver, blood, heart and hypothalamus, with the change being the lowest in the hypothalamus which could be linked to what is this E5, but we'll come back to that in a second. Because the data that was sort of updated here is that now we have some information on glycan age. So this is looking at sugar modifications to the IgG protein that's found in blood. As can be seen in this figure, notably there was a significant reduction in the relative abundance of the pro-inflammatory agalactosylated IgG to a glycoform G0 while there was an increase in the anti-inflammatory digalactosylated glycoform G2. And this is following three doses of E5 treatment. Now, I have to put my hand up and say, I don't know much yet about the functions of these glycan modifications, but they do seem to be going in the opposite direction to what seems to be happening with age. So potentially that could also elucidate what's going on here. 
Anyway, what these preliminary data suggest is that there is some sort of effect happening with E5 in terms of the older treated rats having similar biomarkers to the younger rats, which raises the question as what exactly is E5 and how could it potentially be having these effects in the first place? So it all comes back to blood. And blood can be separated into three main layers. A layer containing the red blood cells, we'll uh, potentially be visiting them soon in a video. The buffy coat, which contains the white blood cells and platelets. And the big remaining fraction is plasma. Now this is a big fraction. It's mostly water, some proteins, ions, hormones and nucleic acids. And this is what Katja was most interested in, which is a good thing because 50% of the blood is plasma. But what part of the plasma? Well, the plasma fraction that they termed E5 is the fraction derived from the platelet-free plasma of young pigs, six to seven months old, an age at which is, according to this article, reflective of the mammalian youthful homeostatic peak. And this paper now actually explains how exactly they extracted this E5 fraction. So following blood extraction from the pigs, they kept the plasma and then they treated it with polyethylene glycol, PEG, which is a polymer that can be used to precipitate extracellular vesicles. These are small membrane-bound particles that can carry various molecules and signals between cells, but are present at low concentrations in plasma. So by following this procedure, doing some spinning steps, and then separating fractions by size, they could concentrate this large volume of plasma into a small volume containing a high concentration of these extracellular vesicles. And it's this fraction, this E5 fraction, that they injected into the rats. So this isn't plasma exchange, neither is it the rats just being given blood, but it's specifically this extracellular vesicle fraction of the plasma that is being given to the rats, which they describe as being E5. So does E stand for extract or EV? Either way, what are EVs? Well, EVs, extracellular vesicles, is a general term for all secreted vesicles that are released from cells into the extracellular environment. They can contain both proteins and RNA, and, and both these proteins and RNA can carry information, and that information could be used as a way that cells communicate. At least in this interview, Katja seems to think that the components responsible for these potential rejuvenating effects are coming from microRNAs. I suspect it's, it's uh, microRNAs. A subset of RNAs that are created within the cell. Fun news, I made a video on microRNAs about three years ago. But it seems like they're still investigating what exactly about these exosomes or these extracellular vesicles is actually attributing, is actually causal to these effects that they're noticing. At this stage, n nobody knows. Uh, I suspect it's, it's uh, microRNAs, which are uh, significant in controlling translation. Mm -hmm. I suspect it's also RNA binding proteins, which are which are very much disturbed in in the aging process, and RNA processing proteins. And I myself am for sure interested. So there has been some updates. I now have a better understanding of what this study was about, but I feel like there's still some gaps in terms of how exactly it's happening. And in terms of the robust lifespan analysis of the rats. But this is still a preprint, and so hopefully soon we will actually get the peer reviewed paper. And when that does come out, I will hopefully make a video on it. So, with that, I hope you've enjoyed my return. If you're bloodthirsty for more content, then check out this video here. Thank you to my Patreon supporters, and thank you for listening. <laughs>